The topic of salary negotiation comes up a lot. I do monthly AMAs over at Instagram and folks ask about salary negotiation quite frequently. So I thought that's probably a good indication that a video on the same topic would likely end up being useful to my subscribers. So in this video, I'm going to give you a detailed eight step guide to negotiating compensation in tech. The first step of this list is probably one of the most critical steps and surprisingly one that 99% of people completely miss, resulting on a subpar offer. All right, let's get started. Step one, salary negotiation starts long before you get an offer. The biggest mistake you can make is to think about negotiation after you land your first offer. Well, let me tell you right off the bat that this is simply too late at this point. You should start thinking and planning about the eventual negotiation long before you even apply for jobs. In fact, your entire application process should be structured and informed by the negotiation process, even though the actual negotiation happens only after you land an offer. Instead of thinking, I've received an offer or two, let me try to increase my compensation for these offers, think of it like, this is the compensation range I want to eventually be based on the trends I've researched. What do I need to do to be able to get to that position? And don't worry if this doesn't make sense right now, the next steps will make it much clearer. Step two, learn the trends. Do you know what standard compensation ranges are for various companies? Not the anecdotal numbers you learn from your friend or picked up from random internet posts or platforms like Blind, where you have no way to verify the authenticity of those claims. Your research needs to be driven by data. You can leverage sites like Levels.fyi to get a more accurate picture. Yes, Levels.fyi is also driven off compensation numbers that people anonymously enter, but because they have such high volume of data, they can build up accurate ranges as well as detect anomalies. One thing you'll learn quickly is that every position for every company will have a pretty large compensation range. This is normal. Not everyone gets the same compensation since the exact numbers depend on a lot of things, including years of experience, quality of experience, interview performance, competing offers, circumstantial demand, location, and so much more. And this leads me to step number three. Understand where you fit. This is usually the trickiest one to do. It is natural for people to either undervalue or overvalue themselves. It's difficult to figure out your actual worth right on the spot. So do your due diligence and make a best guess. Pay special attention to your past experience with relation to what skills are in demand. For example, distributed systems and machine learning experience is in high demand right now, especially in big tech. So if you have a solid background in either of those, you're probably on the higher end of the compensation spectrum. On the opposite end, experience with something like C++ may not be in high demand in big tech, but if you're very skilled at it, you may do very well in fintech. Also, think of how your rewards have been in your current or past companies. Have you been below average, above average, top performer? You can use this to inform your process as well. Step four, make a list of companies to apply to. But not only that, organize them based on their standard compensation ranges. For example, you may want to apply to Microsoft and Meta for various reasons. Um, however, from a compensation standpoint, these companies don't fall in the same bracket. In general, Microsoft's compensation will be a fair bit lower than what Meta will offer. Of course, there are many reasons other than compensation to choose one company over another, but we will get to that later. For now, let's just focus on compensation. So if you're interested in big tech and are applying to, say, companies like Meta, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Netflix, Stripe, and Oracle, I'd put Meta, Netflix, and Stripe as level one, Google and Amazon, and Microsoft as level two, and Oracle as level three. This is most likely somewhat accurate, but things can change every year. So do your research and let the data inform your bucketing. Step five, schedule your interviews. This can be a tricky step. The idea here is to schedule interviews at multiple companies from each compensation band. But not only that, you want to also schedule them at similar timeframes. For example, if you schedule your interview at Meta in August and then Netflix in September, it may give you more time to prep for each interview loop, but it will be a disadvantage to you in terms of offer negotiation. You want offers from multiple companies on the same compensation band to arrive roughly at the same time. So if you need more time to prep, prep first and then schedule the interviews all at the same time. 
Also, companies may ask if you're interviewing at other places. Be honest and say yes. There's no harm in trying out different interview loops. Remember that interviews are not just there for you to be evaluated. You are evaluating the companies as well. Step six, ace your interviews. This seems like stating the obvious, but this is quite an important step. There's a big difference between just about clearing your interviews and acing your interviews. Both can yield an offer, but the compensation can vary greatly according to how you performed in the interviews. Interview performance plays a big part in leveling, which in turn dictates your compensation package. Remember step three, where I ask you to evaluate your fit within the salary ranges. You will need to do that evaluation one more time after your interviews and adjust your expectations accordingly. That being said, even if you didn't have the best interview performance, there is one more thing that may be able to save you and pull your compensation up. And that's the next step. But before that, a quick word from today's sponsor, Arc. The core idea behind Arc is that your location shouldn't limit your career opportunities. So Arc makes it extremely easy to find remote developer jobs and grow your remote career by giving you access to the world's best remote jobs in just one place. But don't think of them just as a job board because they're not. By applying to their featured developers program, you can go straight to the hiring managers and get a job within just 14 days without any job applications or resumes. They work with notable tech companies and fast growing startups like Automatic, Spotify, Hims, HubSpot, and many more. Also, the team at Arc works for you, the applicant, and not the employers. So as a featured developer, companies will apply to you. You'll receive an interview request in as little as 24 hours, and you also receive hands-on support from them with the option to extend expert one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions and group sessions to help you prepare for your interviews. And no, this does not cost you a single penny to get all of these amazing benefits. As of today, they have over 20,000 companies and over 100,000 active remote jobs. So give Arc a try. Use the link in the description below to learn more about their featured developer program and learn how it can help you start or grow your remote software engineering career. Step seven, land multiple competing offers. Step one through step six all lead up to this one single goal of landing multiple competing offers from the companies in the same compensation band. Pay special attention to the phrase same compensation band. Let's say hypothetically that you land an offer from Meta and then you land another offer from Oracle, but your mind is set on joining Oracle. Chances are slim that Oracle will be able to match your offer from Meta. Sure, you can still leverage your meta offer to increase your Oracle offer, but you will only be able to maximize your compensation if two or more companies from the same compensation band compete on the offer, which means you will need to have the right kind of skills they are looking for. You'll have to excel at all of the interviews and you will also need to get the offers relatively around the same time frame. Hopefully this reiterated why planning is so important. Step eight, the actual negotiation. This is the step that most people find the most stressful because it is a bit of a tug of war. The company wants to get the best candidates at the lowest offer and you as the candidate want the best offer from the company you want to join. But if you think of it, this step is only stressful if you haven't planned out the process or aren't prepared. If you followed all the previous step, it is just simply a matter of presenting the data. My suggestion here is to be straightforward and honest. If you have a specific company among the offers that you really want to join, let them know and present your competing offers. This conversation can be as simple as, thank you so much for the offer. X is my top choice and I really love this team or project. However, since I have offers from Y and Z as well, and this offer is a fair bit lower than those, I'd love to join X if you'd be able to match my offers from Y and Z. Also, if you're waiting for another offer to come in, it is totally cool to state that and ask for companies to wait a little bit longer. They are happy to wait for a reasonable amount of time, usually a week or two, to allow you to make an informed decision. Sometimes recruiters can get pushy, resist the pressure and stay calm. If you have direct contact with the hiring manager, you can let them know of your situation as well. But above all, avoid dishonesty. And also don't do this thing where you ask one company to match and then take that offer to another company and ask for more, then go back to the first company. This is just cringe. You may get a little bit more, but it isn't worth losing your integrity over it. If you expect your first choice company to not only match the offer, but offer you slightly higher, let them know of your research and what you expect right up front. But if they do offer what you ask for, make your best effort to accept the offer and not flip flop around. 
I know a lot of folks think about compensation as purely a business transaction in the corporate world, but I think there's still a lot of value in honesty and integrity. And finally, I know this video is about compensation, so I've focused most of the discussion around that. But I do genuinely believe that compensation shouldn't be your top metric in deciding which company to join. You will be much happier on the long run if you join a team that you're passionate about or you've clicked with. That's worth much more than having a few thousand extra dollars every year. At least that has been my experience, so I thought I'd throw it out there. Well, hopefully this video is useful and it'll help you plan your entire interview process properly to potentially maximize your eventual offer. If you have any other tips that I've missed here, let me know in the comments below. Check out my interview playlist here if you need a complete guide to the technical interview preparation process. Uh, good luck and thanks for sticking around till the end. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.